How's it going, everybody? Poser Mobile here, bringing you an absolute banger list of great games that are sure to put you in the mood for the fall season. First up, we've got Bully. While this doesn't necessarily take place entirely during the fall, it's hard to beat Bullworth Academy and the town proper in the fall months. Something about the transition from the beginning of the school year, further into fall, and then into winter just hits that perfect fall pocket. Next up, we've got Firewatch. While the game takes place in the summer of 1989, the color palette for Firewatch really does make the fictional Shoshone National Forest of Wyoming feel like you're in the dead of fall. The sun setting behind the mountains with all those forests of pine does an incredible job of putting you in that cozy, warm yourself up by the fire kind of headspace. Next up, we've got Spider-Man and Spider-Man 2. Both of these games take place in October and November, and I'll give an honorable mention for Miles Morales since it takes place in December, so expect to see that in my eventual follow-up winter video. As a son of the Northeast myself, for me it's hard to beat that homey feeling that New York City brings in the fall. It's sweater weather, the leaves are either falling or all gone in Central Park, and Dunks is in full pumpkin spice mode. Next up, we've got the original Life is Strange as well as Life is Strange 2, both of which specifically take place during the fall season. The original takes place in the fictional Arcadia Bay, Oregon during October, while the second game takes place on the west coast between Seattle and Mexico, starting in October and going through into the next year, though I never really got the same fall vibe from the second game like I did from the original. True Colors is an honorable mention here, as it's got a pretty good fall vibe, but it takes place in spring transitioning into summer, so I'm not sure that that counts. Next up, we've got Night in the Woods. I don't think this one is as well known as the other games on this list so far, but it really should be. It's an adventure game where you play as a cat who drops out of college and returns to her Rust Belt inspired hometown alongside her goth crocodile childhood friend to find that things have changed a lot since the mines closed all taking place during the middle of October. I don't want to go into much more than that because of spoiler territory, but I would definitely recommend it to anybody who loves a good story. Next up, we've got Skyrim. This is another one that doesn't necessarily take place during fall. It actually begins on Sundas, the 17th of Last Seed, so Sunday, August 17th, for those of us outside Tamriel, and goes from there. But between the very real fall vibe of Riften, combined with the fact that you can just add the Seasons of Skyrim mod and make it really feel like fall all over Skyrim, you can definitely get that fall vibe, even more so if you've got the Hearthfire DLC or a housing mod. Next up, following the same vein as Skyrim, we've got Fallout 4. If Spider-Man gave me that homey feeling, well, this takes it to another level as a former Commonwealth resident myself. If you weren't aware, the game starts before the bombs drop on October 23rd, and you regain consciousness 210 years later, Halloween decorations still on the walls and all. While this already has that post-apocalyptic fall feeling to it, I would definitely recommend picking up the Wabajock Mod Manager and trying out some of the mod packs on there to make your experience even better if you've got the PC hardware for it. Otherwise, just head into Diamond City and check out the off-brand Fenway as well as Slocum's Joe for that off-brand Dunks experience. Next up, we've got Ghosts of Tsushima. You want to talk about a fall vibe, this is the game for it. It starts out at the end of summer and progresses through fall and into winter, so you get to experience that full three-season summer into fall into winter transition with all that gorgeous Japanese foliage. And the duels? Don't even get me started on the duels. If you've played the game before, you know the exact duel that I'm thinking of with all the red Japanese maple leaves everywhere. Next up, we've got Alan Wake. This is another one that doesn't necessarily take place during fall, just before it in August and September actually, but something about the Pacific Northwest just makes it feel like fall comes earlier there. If you ever want to check out a real-life town that's sort of like Bright Falls, but without all of the, you know, dark presence hanging around, Definitely check out the Puget Sound area. Just make sure you bring a flashlight, you never know what could happen out there once you get off the ferry. Finally, we've got Grand Theft Auto 4. Alright, you already know the drill here, Liberty City is based off of New York, it very clearly takes place during the fall season, and it's one of the best games ever made. Where could you possibly go wrong with this one? 
A lot of the same kind of fall vibes as Spider-Man. They're both set in what is essentially New York City, after all. But it's a very different experience being on the ground in the dirt and grime of Liberty City compared to web swinging around New York. This is the only one of the games on this list not playable on modern consoles, but given the recent Red Dead 1 port, hopefully this will be the next one to come out. Until then, you're going to have to play it on PC or bust out your 360 or PS3. Alright, that's going to do it for me, everybody. There are certainly more games out there that give that fall vibe, but I had to end the list at some point. If you enjoyed the video, it would be awesome if you could leave a like, comment down below if one of these is your pick for the best fall game, or if you've got a pick that I missed, and subscribe to the channel for more gaming content, and stay tuned for my eventual winter and or holiday version of this video.